It's our honor to have you. If you're visiting, if you don't know the Lord, today could be your big day. I'd heard that His grace was amazing. And I'd heard of His wonderful peace. I'd heard how His love lifted sinners out of their wretched misery. But I didn't know this Redeemer. I was so lost and hell bound Till one day I met him at Calvary And there neath the cross I found
Red Book, Songs of Faith, page 120. Church full of singers. Who's got a song? Get at me to sing. Come on, sis. Bless your Lord. There we go. Bless the Lord. 
Jen's pray for us.
Uh, you may. That's right. There's a rich man and lift up his eyes in hell. And boy, what he'd have give to have a little bit of water. He said, if you could just have Abraham, I mean, uh, old Lazarus, just dip his old nasty finger in some water just to cool my parched tongue. But hey, ain't you glad we're going to a place like that song they sung? It's going to be joy, joy, joy. We won't have to worry about that. We won't have to worry about the cares of this life no more. Thank God I'm looking forward to that place, ain't you? I'm looking forward to that place. Anybody else? Mind the Lord this morning. Thank the Lord first and foremost for saving me what he's done in my life. And I tell you what, boy, he's been blessed in my life, man. I tell you what, he's blessed me every day. Amen, buddy. I wake up every day, my job, my home, especially with my family and my kids. I tell you what, last October I got saved, man. Had to see my family, some of them five, seven years. They didn't come around them. Didn't see them because I was living the wrong lifestyle, you know. I just thank for you for reuniting me with my family. I enjoy it so much every weekend I come. I just love this church, too. I mean, it's a, if you come looking for a blessing, you're going to get one. And every time I come to this church, it's such a blessing, and I love it. If I live closer, it's where I'd be right here. Amen, brother. I, I just thank you and love everybody in here. Love all of you. Amen. I appreciate the change I've seen in Scott's life. Yeah. Amen. Anybody else this morning? Something on your heart? Amen, buddy. That's right. Amen. I get a sense of comfort. Amen. I can't express fully how I feel, but I can say I'm just happy. Every time I come here, I just feel like, uh, Amen. Amen. I've got a word in the world to give. Amen. Bless my family and give me comfort. Amen. Ain't you glad God makes it like that? Anybody else this morning? Obey the Lord. Amen, buddy. Amen, sister. Prayers answered. Anybody else? Somebody else. Right. 
talk to you all by yourself. Right. And I thank you for that. I thank you for all your blessings. Amen. 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 Somebody else. Amen. Amen. Thank the Lord. Anybody else? All right. Turn in your Bibles to Psalms chapter number 37. Psalms 37. I'll start reading in verse number 3. Psalms 37, verse number 3. If you find your place, say amen. amen. You glad you saved this morning? Amen. I ask that about every service. If that bothers you or you get tired of saying yes or amen, there's something wrong with you. I'm glad I'm saved. I tell the Lord all the time. I'll be at work, just sitting there working, maybe going out to the truck to get something. I'll just be out, not even really, just my mind being on my job. Just I'll be like, Lord, thank you for saving me. It's the greatest thing that ever happened to me. I don't know about you. Me and Tanner was talking at work this week, and I said, I believe some people have just been saved too long. Amen. They forgot the mess they used to be in. Okay? I've not really, Lori, I've not really had asthma like I had it as a boy in a long time, many years. God touched me. I still, I still deal with it. But you know what? I've almost forgot how bad that it was because I've had it so good for so long. I'll get a little rough spot and I'll get my inhaler out and I'm fine. But I used to pass out. I, I could not breathe till I would black out and they'd have to take me to the ER. Had asthma so bad. But God touched me from that, ain't Catherine? But sometimes I wonder if we really remember how bad that that was. That's why I can get in that old house and I can go to shouting and praising God because the Lord's not letting me forget how bad a shape I was in, Andrew. How lost I was, how miserable I was, and how great it felt when I knelt at an altar and he forgave me of my sins. That's why I can get up here and praise him, amen, because I ain't forgot that. We need to remember where he brung us from, amen, get committed in this way. All right, turn with me over here to Psalms chapter number 37, verse number three. Trust in the Lord and do good. So shalt thou dwell in the land, and verily thou shalt be fed. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust in him, and he shall bring it to pass. You can be seated. I want to preach for a few minutes, if God will help me, and I'll let you go to the house. Uh, I, we begin to read right here. It said, Trust in the Lord. It's impossible to please God. Unless we have faith in him. And I tell you what, this way that we're living in, it is a way of trust. It's a way of faith. You've heard me say it before. I wished it wasn't like that. I wish that God would just come down and sit and speak to us like he did uh, some of the men of old. But we're living in a day where we have to trust the Lord. And the Bible said, uh, to trust the Lord what with all thine heart and lean not to your own understanding. And he said, in all ways acknowledge him and he will direct our past. But so many times, uh, we want to trust everything else but the unseen hand. We want to trust what we know. Uh, we want to trust what we've done before. Uh, we want to trust where we've been and how we've done it before. Uh, but the Bible here tells us uh, to trust in the Lord and what? Uh, to do good. Once you trust in the Lord, now I'm talking about uh, for your salvation, like we all uh, raised our hand and said we're saved, uh, the Bible tells us uh, to go out and to do good and to do good work. And the Bible tells us uh, to delight in that. Uh, you know, sometimes uh, me and Tanner was talking the other day about the job we're doing right now. I said, I don't ever dread coming to work over here. Uh, we're getting to work in our condition uh, where we're inside. Uh, the place is clean. Uh, we've got it to ourselves. I never get up and dread uh, going to the work. Work. I've been enjoying uh, what we're doing. And my God, how much more uh, 
why should we enjoy uh, working for the Lord and we ought to delight in the things of God and the things of his way. Uh, so many times I look back over uh, the congregation and so many people look like they really don't want to be here. Uh, they're not involved in the service. They're not engaged in the service. They're looking here. They're looking there. You can see that their minds are a million miles away. And we're in here three times a week uh, for about 30 minutes for the preaching of the word. And we can't even delight in the law and the word of the Lord low enough to pay attention uh, for 30 minutes to hear of what God has to say to us. But I'm glad it's a good way, amen, and I enjoy this way. And I've got delighted that there's joy in serving the Lord. Uh, you think, well, preacher, I've got joy in a lot of other stuff. Uh, you might have fun in a lot of stuff. Uh, you might have fun for a while, but there's a difference in fun and there's a difference in joy. But I'm glad there's joy in serving the Lord this morning. You know what? I used to, Chris, I was on the outside for a while and I was looking in and I think, boy, them Christian folks, uh, they ain't having no fun. Uh, they ain't got no joy. Uh, they're bound down with a bunch of rules and regulations. Uh, they can't go do this and they can't go do that. Uh, you know why I thought like that? I hadn't been converted. I hadn't had a renewing of the mind. Hey, but I tell you what, uh, when you get a hold of the things of God and you begin to trust in Him and you give Him your life and you commit to Him, amen, He'll change your walk. He'll change your desires and the things that I used to find pleasure in uh, for a season the Bible said I can look back on those things that I had pleasure in and with all honesty I can say I hate those things now you know why because God has changed uh, me from the very inside to the outside amen it'll make a difference in your life delight thyself in the Lord and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart you say, what are you talking about? I've prayed for this and I've prayed for this and it don't seem like God's coming through. He'll give us the desires of our heart if we go back up our, if we're doing good, if we're in fellowship, if we're committed to him. But let me go on down here to verse five and we'll, I'll hit this right quick and let you go to the house. He said, verse five, commit thy way unto the Lord, trust also in him and he shall bring it to pass. I begin to think about that. How many of you can say there have been times in your life when you didn't see no way, no how, you didn't have peace, you didn't have joy? Even a Christian maybe come by when you was backslid and say, oh, if you'll get back in God's house, Oh, if you'll get back in there and start doing good and start trusting the Lord, He can bring back that joy. He can bring back that peace. You think there ain't no way. There ain't no way. But how many of you sitting here today is being down that road and you can lift your hand up and say, hey, he made it come to pass. I committed myself to him. I've come back and now he's made it come to pass. I'm glad I'm serving a God this morning uh, that makes things come to pass, amen, if we'll commit ourselves to him. That's what I want to get right here uh, for just a minute. The word commit, let me just slow down and preach. The word commit means to be bound or to bind to a person or a policy. We need to be committed, church. We need to be committed. We got so many people in all the churches, not just our church, and I'm talking about God's church, uh, that they come in here, but yet there's no commitment. There's no commitment. It's I'll come and I'll serve you, God, when it's convenient for me. God, I'll do what I can uh, when I've got the time. God has no respect to that. He wants your best. He wants all of you or he don't want nothing. He wants those that are committed to what? The way. This is a good way. It's a different way. The Bible said there's a broad way and there's a narrow way. And I heard a preacher tell a while back, he said, there's some old smart alien that came to me and he said, preacher, uh, where is the narrow way uh, compared to the broad way? He said, brother, is it beside it? Is it in another region? He said, brother, for all I know, it's smack dab right in the middle of the broad way. He said, but you can bet this, it's going a different direction, amen. We're all in this world, ain't we? We live in it every day. How, how nice would it be 
If we could all right here, we all in one mind and one accord, if we could work together tomorrow, if we was all going to the same job, uh, boy, we could talk about the Lord and we could sing. I mean, we'd be over here working in the choir singing. Hey, man, we'd have the youth singing. Uh, we'd have the preachers up preaching. Uh, boy, that'd be some good days at work, but that ain't the way it works. We got to, wherever you're working at tomorrow, brother, you got to face what tomorrow holds. Uh, Ricky, you're in law enforcement. God knows what you or Jesse is going to face tomorrow. It you ain't going to have the church here with you uh, but praise God it's a good way and the one that established this way he said he wouldn't leave us or forsake us but I tell you what we're of the world but we're in the world but we're not of the world this morning amen he called us from out of the world and to be committed to him to bind to a person or a policy then I begin to go down and look that word up bind it means to adhere to a single mass now I begin to think about these ladies that cook. I love good cooking. I don't like to cook, but I like to eat. Now I don't like no old fast food. I hate that junk. I have to live on it sometimes, and I hate it. But when I get to sit down and enjoy a home-cooked meal, they ain't nothing better. But I was watching the girls in the kitchen the other night, and they was cooking up a cake, Jane. And I didn't know what they was making. Suddenly they had some ingredients in there that if you eat it by yourself, it would not have been good. I mean, let's just stop for a minute. Who in here likes butter? The girls had stopped and got a big old thing of real butter from a dairy. Man, I love butter. They was putting it in there and one of them said, oh, you've put too much. I was like, you cannot. You absolutely cannot put too much butter on anything. Amen. Somebody help me preach. <laughs> you can take an old piece of dry bread. Help me out now. You can take an old piece of light bread. You can put it in the toaster. And you can toast it. And it's dry. It's flaky. And you can eat it. And it ain't worth a hoot. But man, you can slather butter all over that. And if you're patient enough while it's warm to let it soak in, they ain't nothing better. They ain't nothing better. Who likes cornbread? This man right here, he takes cornbread for lunch and nothing else, so that's all he needs. You take cornbread, son, it'll choke you to death. The man, you can slide it open, put you about that much butter on it. Like I said, if you can wait till it melts. I don't need jelly on that toast. I don't need honey on it, neither on the cornbread. Just butter. Amen. But yet I don't want to go to the refrigerator and get me a spoonful and eat it. That, ain't, that don't make no sense. But I'll put spoonfuls on that, on that toast and it's amazing. It's the same thing with these cakes these ladies make. I love pound cake. Jane, Diane, they, Catherine, they make these homemade pound cakes. And if I ain't wrong, ladies, don't you put a whole pound of butter in there? But that's not just it. There's other ingredients go in there. And when they're stirring it up, they put this in there and you can see it in the bowl. And then they put some old raw eggs in there. Who in the world wants to eat raw eggs? And then you put a pound of butter. None of that even looks good. But man, now when they get to stirring it up and they get to mixing it up, you know what? When they get through, if they've done it right, every bit of that stuff is bound together and it's one. You can't see where the eggs was. Somebody will get this in a minute. You can't see where the flour was. Uh, you can't see where the butter was. Uh, but it's all committed. It's bound together as one. And no longer uh, can you see this part or that part or this part. And when you put it together, uh, somebody years ago, hey, figured out if you put all this together and it binds together and you bake it, it's amazing to eat. I'm glad there's a God in heaven. Uh, that put some things in this word. And he said if you'll bind them together and mix them up and have them as one, it'll be great for the inner man. Amen. Amen. God help us to be committed. And I went on to bind and it said to adhere, to stick fast, to believe in and follow. We need some folks that's committed to the cause of Christ. Are you committed this morning? That's what I want to, are you committed or are you a counterfeit? You'll have to ask yourself, I don't know. God shows me certain things, but I don't know. That's between you and God. Are you committed 
to the cause of Christ or are you just sitting around and riding the coattails of others because it makes you feel good, because it makes you look good every now and then, or are you committed to the cause of Christ? I'll tell you what, how you find out when the rubber meets the road and the good times are replaced with the hard times, when the times of overflowing and joy are replaced, amen, with some dry spells, you will soon find out who is committed to the cause of Christ and who's just riding along uh, for the good times, amen. I want to be committed uh, to the cause of Christ until like the song they sung, if they put me in the ground, until I hear that trumpet sound, amen, and I get up out of the ground, God help me uh, to stay committed uh, to the cause of Christ. If you ain't 100% committed to Christ, you will not stay the course. Over here in Luke 14 and 28, it said, for which of you, Intending to build a tower, sitteth not down first and counteth the cost, whether he have sufficient to finish it. Lest happily after he hath laid the foundation and is not able to finish it, and all behold, begin to mock him. You know why we got so many people that come in to church and then they're right back out? They didn't count the cost. You say, preacher, I've heard you get up and say salvation didn't cost you anything. It didn't cost me nothing for salvation. Jesus paid it all. Can I get a witness? Amen. He paid it all. But did you, in yourself, once you accepted that, Dwayne Ray, did you not have to sacrifice some things that Dwayne Ray, the inner man, wanted and enjoyed? You had to say, Lord, when you come up here, let me just slow down and preach you how it is. When you're lost and undone without God, and God's Holy Ghost speaks to you and calls you up here and you accept Jesus Christ into your life, you are committing yourself to him. Lord, I'm going to follow you. Lord, I'm going to go where you go. Lord, I'm going to do what you tell me to do in this word. So many times you go to people and you try to tell them why are you in this shape. Man, I thought you had a hold of it. Hey, there's, I could give you, I could count on both hands of people right here that's not here this morning, that there was here. They seemed committed. They didn't miss. They was in, but all of a sudden, something drew them out and they're no longer here. They had me fooled, but they never had God fooled. God help us to be committed to the things of Christ. But when you commit to him, you got to surrender some old things out of your life. Salvation didn't cost me, but I had to give some stuff up. You know what? That's what keeps a lot of people out. I say it all the time. I'll say it again. God will replace those things that you lay down. And he won't make you lay them down. If you don't want to, you don't have to. You can come up here and cry to the carpet's wet. You can say, Lord, I don't want to go to hell. Will you save me? And you can get right back up and go out them doors and live a lifestyle that you've always lived and you'll die and go to hell just the same way before you come down here to this altar. Man, call me wanting to want, know want, why I preach perfection. I don't preach perfection. There ain't none of us can live perfect. I fail God every day. My Bible says, he that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to him it's a sin. We've all sinned and come short. I'm talking about repentance. I might sin and I might fail, but I repent. I repent daily. Paul said, I die daily. That's the difference in a born again child of God and a counterfeit. A counterfeit can live in that and waller in that. And when the preaching gets hard, uh, they go away sorrowful uh, because they don't want to hear it. Uh, but a true a born again child of God, uh, when the word gets on me or it gets on you and shines a light where we've come short of God's glory and his will, uh, we'll find us a place to go back and repent again again and say Lord forgive me and help me not to fall again amen God help us to have enough to finish this thing forsaken all follow him Luke 14 and 33 says so likewise whosoever he be of you that forsaketh not all that he hath he cannot be my disciple that's rough that's a hard saying I mean the word of God said he told the disciples, he said, if you're going to follow me, you've got to hate your mother, 
You got to hate your father. You got to hate your brother. You got to hate your sister. You say, preacher, I thought he's a God of love. He is a God of love. He don't really mean you got to hate someone. He means you're going to love me uh, so much that, 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 that the love you have uh, for your fellow man is going to seem like hate uh, because I'm your all in all. I'm your everything. That's what's wrong with most folks today. Uh, they ain't forsook nothing. They ain't forsook their self. Uh, they ain't forsook the old lifestyle. Amen. Uh, they want to follow the crowd uh, that's following Jesus but if they hadn't already uh, you just wait uh, when the sayings got hard uh, many of them turned back and went back to their old lifestyle you know why uh, they wasn't committed uh, to the way uh, they were just following along uh, but the Lord had a faithful few amen and he looked back at them and he said will you go also and Peter said Lord uh, where would we go amen uh, you have the words uh, to eternal eternal life and we believe that you are the Christ I believe he's the Christ this morning amen and I'm just going to put my trust in him God help me uh, to stay committed to the way uh, no matter how rough or steep that it gets the trouble is we see so many new converts not willing to forsake all I've seen a many of them down right here it's not here no longer. I'd say, son, boy, girl, if you're going to do this, if you're going to go all out for God, and you're 100% in, you got to get rid of them friends you're hanging out with. Had a boy look me in the face. He said, that's all the friends I've got. I said, if you'll get in here and stay committed, God will put you a whole new set of friends in your life. Amen. Fella's not here no more. He, didn't, he wasn't patient enough on God to send him in friends. God help us, church, to forsake all and follow him. That's the biggest issue with you young converts, especially the young ones. They won't forsake their friends. And you take those that won't forsake their friends and bind up with Christian friends and commit to Christian friends, and they'll find their self right back out in the same place that they was. It's a commitment. It's a way. It ain't always easy. That's rough sometimes. But I tell you what, you agree to love Lord or you don't. The Bible says you can't serve two masters, that you'll love one and hate the other. You say, well, I love my friends. I love my lifestyle, but I love God too. You're a liar. You don't. And when you cling to those friends, you're, you're rejecting God. You're saying, Lord, I hate you. You wouldn't maybe dare say that with your mouth, but you're saying it with your actions, amen. You're either going to serve God or you're going to serve man. And the Bible says you can't serve both. God help us uh, to be committed to the Lord and hate everything else. We're living in a day where good's called evil and evil's called good everywhere you look. But that don't make it right because the world says so. Had a, let me give you two quick points, literal points here, and we'll go to the house. We went riding side by sides this weekend, some of us from the church, and we got in some pretty rough places. I'd never been there before. Jordan had been there. And a couple different times during the day, I mean, you can't see very far. It's twisty, it's windy, you can't see what's around the next corner. But there was times he'd be like, hey, look, you need to keep your speed up right here. And up here at the top, there's a big old flat rock. You need to go right or left. And when you go, just commit to it and go. He said, there's a certain place that you'll come, there'll be a drop off. He said, when you get right there, Dwayne said, I've been here before. He said, your first instinct, you want to hit your brakes. You want to, oh, that's rough. I want to stop. But he said, a man told me, he said, when you get right there, whatever you do, don't stop. Don't hit your brakes. He said, nothing else, give it gas. So we got up out of them places. I told my wife, I said, now you hang on. I said, when we get down here to this drop off and we get to these ledges, I'm not hitting the brakes. I said, if nothing else, I'm going to hit the gas. You know why I made it through there? Because I listened to some folks that had been there before. I could have said, well, I know what to do. I've been doing this a long time. That's what's wrong with folks. They don't want to listen to advice. They don't want to listen to the word of God. They don't want to listen to help. I have people come to me all the time and they'll say this or that and I'll tell them what the Bible says. Well, preacher, I believe. Talk to a man this week. It's a certain it don't matter what you believe. 
As nice as I can say it, I, and, and to make him feel better like I wasn't being a jerk and I wasn't, I said, it don't matter what I believe. I said, I have to believe what the Word of God says. I had to trust Jordan. I had to trust, trust Dwayne because I'd never been there. And that made me think of another time when we all went riding dirt bikes. Man, it was rough as a cob. And there was a certain hill climb. I'd been up it before. Seen a lot of people fell on it. Mostly fell than go up it. And me and Riley was riding. There's four or five other guys. There's a couple guys from the church here. And we got speakers in our helmet where we can talk. And I said, honey, in a couple of curves, I said, there's going to be a hill climb up here. And I said, these boys are going to stop. And they're going to look at it. They're going to second guess. I said, they're going to try to pick them a route. And I said, they're going to get fouled up. I said, because they're uncertain. They're unsure. I said, I want you. I, she's the littlest one there, a little old girl. She probably wasn't about 14 then. I said, when we get up there, I said, you go first. You go ahead of me. And I said, I want you to pick the right or the left. It don't matter which side you pick. I said, it's rough the whole way. I said, but here's going to be the difference, and here's why you're going to make it. That little old bike she had would fly. I said, when you get to the bottom of that hill, I said, don't let out. Don't look at me. I said, you look to the very top. I said, you can see all the way to the top. And I said, you grab you a handful of throttle. And I said, you hammer down. And I said, when you start jumping, that bike wants to start jumping. You feel like it's going to flip. It's trying to throw. I said, don't start looking for another route. I said, you just pin it to win it. That's what we need to do, church. Sometimes it gets steep. Sometimes it gets rough. Sometimes we lose traction and we'll think, my God, there's got to be a better route. There's got to be a better way. Some of them grown men, they took the bypass. You'll never go nowhere every time that God, and you know what? You know what some of them trails call them, Dwayne? They call them a bailout. That's what it says on the trail, I promise, don't it, Jordan? The bailout. If this is too tough for you and you ain't got the heart to go, you can take the bailout route. That's what a lot of Christians do, and they take the bailout route, and they say, boy, this is much easier. I believe I'm just going to stay on this route. But you know what she did? I heard that little circle about halfway up through her. I heard her start screaming in her helmet. Whoa, son, she had her pen. That bike was swapping ends, and you know what she did? She made it all the way to the top. I got right behind her. I did the same thing. Nobody else made it up. They made it, but they struggled. Throwing helmets, kicking gear, throwing their bikes down. They stopped. They contemplated. They tried to pick them an easy route. Sometimes there ain't no easy route. It's just the route. And she did what I said. She trusted that. She was looking to the top. She held her wide open, and she got there. The rest of those guys tried to get up and make a little old easy path and every one of them failed to get to the top. Church, sometimes we just got to grin and bear it and hold on and say, Lord, whatever comes my way, I ain't letting out. I ain't stopping. Once you stop, I told her, I said, if you ever get stopped or stalled out on this hill, I said, because I've done it before myself, I said, you cannot get took back off. You'll have to go all the way back to the bottom and start all over. I said, then you got doubt in your mind. She's been there a couple of times and she's made it every time. You know why? Because she knows she can. Church, it might get rough, but you can make it. Amen. You can make it. Let me give you one more example right quick and we'll go to the house. I was working for the power company years ago. And as I'd worked at CNA, man, I hated that. I ain't had but two or three jobs in my whole life. But I know, and I ain't putting nothing down. Don't, don't think I'm doing that. Lord, I've been broke more times than I've had money. But I know right off the bat, Mike, working in the plant wasn't for me. I, just can't, I felt like I was in jail. I couldn't do it. These people made a good living doing that. I couldn't do it. I wasn't in there but just a couple of months. I got mad, throwed my stuff out. Me and the boss man had words. I was kicking tools all over the place. Back then, you had to make these razor blades. It'd take you forever to make them. Then you'd have hammers. And, man, my old Jane, when I got mad, I kicked that. I wasn't living right. I kicked that box. Tools went everywhere. Everybody just quit their jobs. It was over diving on that stuff like them birds down there at McDonald's when you used to throw french fries out. 
And I'm like, man, these people are brainwashed. <laughs> but anyway, let me get on. I decided I wanted something different. So I went to work for the power company. I liked it. If I'd had a better boss man, I'd probably maybe still been there. Who knows? But anyway, I worked for the power company for a couple of years. And one of my buddies that worked at CNA, he called me and he said, man, how do you like it? I said, man, it's great. I said, I'm outside every day. The boss man, I said, when he's there, he's a jerk. I said, but half the time he's out gone and, and we're doing our own thing. I said, you're outside. I said, we're in the mountains, in the woods. I said, I love it. He said, man, that sounds good. He said, I'm so sick of being here. He said, could you get me a job? I said, man, they're needing help right now. And he said, man, get me a job. He said, Let, do I need to get an application? I said, all I got to do is tell him, son. I said, you've got the job. He said, well, tell him I'll be there Monday. So Monday morning, he shows up at my house. We get in the truck. And we're driving to the job site. I said, man, did you just quit or did you put in a two-week notice? He said, no. He said, I just took two weeks of vacation. He said, I'm going to try this out for a couple weeks. He said, if I like it and it suits me, he said, then I'll... I'll take this job. And he said, and if I don't, he said, then I ain't lost nothing. He said, I got paid for my two weeks vacation. I'm getting paid here, and if I don't like it, I'll just go right back to CNA where it was. I knew before we ever got out of the truck, Matt, he wasn't committed. I knew. I didn't tell the boss man that. I wasn't going to rat him out. But I knew he'd be there two weeks. And he was going to go right back to where he was. That's what happens when a lot of folks come up here to the altar. They're sitting back here, life's in a mess. Lord, I'm losing everything I've got, losing my friends, I'm losing my money, I'm losing my job. Man, I'm, I'm hooked on drugs and alcohol. And the preacher thought, Lord, I'll be, I'm going to go up here and try this for a couple weeks. You get, Lord, my life's in a mess. Lord, will you help me, please? Jesus, I need your help. Lord, I'm in a mess. I don't know where else to turn to. Uh, Lord, will you help me? Lord, I'm sorry. Then they get up. Why well, it feels better. But they didn't do like Elisha. We talked about it the other Sunday. When they come by and the man of God threw the mantle on him, he said, give me just a minute. Bible said he slew the oxen and burnt the plows. He said, Bible said that the spirit's willing, but the flesh is weak. He's like, man, I want to follow this man of God. I heard about him. But I've got a lot invested in this. I mean, this is Elisha feed and seed store. Equipment rental. I got it all right here. But you know what he did? When the Lord put a call on his life, he went back and burned everything that he had. When you come up here to the altar and you say, Lord, I want to follow you. Would you forgive me of my sins? You're burning all that stuff in the past. That old boy worked two weeks. He said, I don't think this is for me. He said, I'm going back where I was. I'm afraid that's what a lot of people do with the church. God help us to burn them bridges. I know I'm weak. Mike, that's why I got to burn them bridges. I don't have no old friends from my past. Not a one. Not a one. Anybody I run around with, you see sitting in this congregation this morning. You know why? Because I burnt them bridges. Because I know the Spirit's willing, but the flesh is weak. Help us, church, to be committed. To say, Lord, I'll get rid of this. I'll get rid of that. I'll burn this, Lord, because I'm 100% committed to you. Diane, come to the piano. I'm done. Every head bowed and every eye closed. She plays something softly on the piano. I do this so often. I want to give a two-fold altar call. Maybe you've not been quite as committed as you could have been. Maybe you're still holding on to some little bitty things in your life. You say, preacher, it don't matter. It matters to God. It's a committed way, but it's a good way. Or maybe you'd like to come up here this morning and just get some strength and direction for that hill climb you're on. Maybe you're smack dab in the middle of that old rough rocky hill that I was talking about. 
and you're thinking about getting on the brakes, won't you just step out and say, God, would you help me not to get on the brake, but to get on the throttle? I know it's rough. We got kids in high school. We got kids in college. Listen to me, kids. I know it's rough. I've been there. I ain't so old. It stinks being the odd man. It does. When they go to party, you don't want to sit at home by yourself. But I promise if you'll commit to Christ, He'll commit to you. Young Christian, you say, I really ain't got no friends. All my friends are from my past. If you'll pray and ask God, I promise He'll put friends in your life. Godly friends. Anybody else want to pray? God help me to be more committed to the way. Anybody else? Maybe you're sitting here this morning and you just don't want to get up out of your seat for some reason. Would you slip your hand up and say, Preacher, would you pray for me that I would ever more be committed to God? Anybody, slip your hand up and write back down. Lord, help me to be more committed. God bless that hand. More committed to reading your word. More committed to your prayer place. More committed to being that Christian. God bless that hand. God bless that hand. If we ask Him and believe, He'll give us that commitment and the resilience that we need to get through. The Bible said don't just be doers of the Word or hearers of the Word, but to be doers of the Word. God help us. I felt like throwing in the towel myself. Anybody relate to that? But ain't you glad you didn't? Ain't you glad you didn't? Amen. Thank the Lord. Appreciate God's word this morning. Appreciate your attention. Ain't you glad that he committed to us? Amen. All right, I appreciate your attention this morning. Appreciate everybody being here. Visitors, if you're here this morning, we're so glad that you chose to be with us this morning. Please get the word out. We will not be here uh, tonight, but we'll be down on Parker Pageant at the revival meeting. That starts at 5 o'clock. Bring somebody with you. That don't give you excuse to lay out of church because we ain't going to be here. Come on down there, represent our church, represent the Lord. Committed. I just preached on that. So if you're thinking about laying out, let that sink in and, and make you feel guilty. So anyway, I love you. The all stand will be dismissed. Brother Mike Morris, would you dismiss us in prayer, brother?